G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. So it's Saturday afternoon here in Australia, sort of almost 4 o'clock. So that means it's going to be very early Saturday morning over in the States uh, and other places in the world as well. So the market has been trending down a little bit and people are probably a little bit panicky uh, and it's understandable. But I'm going to show you some reasons why I'm not panicking and look, I think we can still go lower. I just don't think we're going to go really low. Uh, and again, I've been saying this for a while and I don't want to sound like a, someone who just harps on, but I just need to make sure that at least my viewers uh, understand my point of view uh, and that I don't think we're going to go a whole lot lower. I'm not saying it's uh, not possible, I just think it's unlikely. But we'll move on to my thoughts there. Look, the market up is a little bit, the, sorry, the market is up a little bit. Uh, and of course, you know, we've been having some pretty heavy sell-offs and they just don't last day after day after day. There's people who are still going to get in and play the market and, you know, just buy things in general and they think that they're finally down to a good price. So I definitely think that's what's going on. And look, again, the market has come up a bit. I think this was down around 533 billion uh, only, I think, maybe 24 or 48 hours ago or something. Uh, so it's popped back up a little bit as well. But... Uh, gas prices has come down which is good but the BTC dominance is rising so again I think people are getting back in it hasn't risen by a lot but you know it's not to say that it can't go lower but let's have a look all right what are the big gainers has anything had any really big gains well they're block stack nice they are doing well they had a good pump pull back and now they're starting to move again we did see that story the other day about block stack Elrond uh, and I can't remember the, the name of the other one. I think it might have even been NEM, uh, to be honest. And so they've had some good moves. And again, we've got some, you know, double digit moves. Nothing too crazy. They're in the low double digits. But look, they're in the double digits, a few of them. And then some single digit uh, moves right there. What about losses? Have we had any big losses? No, not in the top 100 anyway. XRP's come down, so 53 cents. So I am thinking I'm going to buy some more XRP. I didn't buy anything yesterday, uh, but I may have to get in uh, to some more XRP. But look, really, everything else is just, you know, literally sort of single digit losses and even below single digit losses. Uh, nothing sort of, yeah, too major over the last 24 hours. Don't get me wrong, over the last seven days, some projects haven't uh, fared so well. Again, Thorchain, you know, down 10%. But this is just a natural kind of reaction to how markets work. Now, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So this is probably getting people a little bit panicky. As we can see, we've tipped here and we've just rolled over and we're starting to set in lower lows. So yes, we absolutely could pull back. I think it's likely we probably get down to somewhere around about here. Whether we make it down to this 16000 or not, I'm thinking more around this $17,100 mark. But we'll have to wait and see. It could all just turn around tomorrow uh, and, you know, we go to the moon. Who knows? But I definitely think it's possible we sort of come down and test somewhere around here. I think it's, again, still possible we sort of maybe even come down and test around about here, halfway between the 50-day 50, uh, 50 and the 100-day moving average, which is now lining up perfectly, basically, with this kind of... Uh, you know, key support level here, which is at 13.9, you know, let's round it up to $14,000 level. So I do think it's possible we come down here. I think it's less likely we come down and test the 200 day moving average at the moment. I think we're still a ways off uh, coming back and testing this. And as I've said before, I think more somewhere between maybe 25,000 to 35,000 is when we might see a heavy correction to come back down and test this. And here's why. There's a ton of stories uh, here at the moment. That is why I just don't think we're going to have any major corrections at the moment. There's still major buying going on. So number one, micro strategy. I brought this up the other day. They've gone and sold some uh, convertible bonds and things like that. They were aiming to raise $400 million. They raised $650 million. They are buying Bitcoin with that $650 million. As what they've stated, look, whether they get into any other cryptocurrencies, who knows? But they've raised $650 million, and my guess is it's going to go all to Bitcoin. How low do you think the Bitcoin price can go if they're buying up $650 million? I think it's going to be pretty hard for it to dump really hard. I'm not saying it couldn't. I'm just saying that the buying pressure 
would be pretty hard for it to dump really, really low. Not impossible. Some whale could come out and, you know, just again, really smash it uh, and dump it. But I think that's unlikely because I don't think they'd be able to buy back. Look, unless they just needed cash for some reason, they needed to be liquid for whatever reason, then a whale could come and dump it. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think there's a bit of market manipulation going on with the exchanges trying to, you know, again, uh, stifle the market from everyone longing it, get everyone confused, and then when everyone's starting to short it, then they'll let, uh, let it pump. Now, they can't do it all by themselves, but I definitely think that's what's going on. As I've said before, I highly think that people who bought Bitcoin at, you know, let's say $5,000, $6,000, they've tripled their money basically at $18,000. So they're selling, they're taking some profit. Now, not the small-time investors like you and me, we're not selling because we want to hold on, you know, much longer term for bigger prices. These bigger companies that, again, may have bought hundreds or thousands or maybe even, again, hundreds and thousands of Bitcoin, they're happy to sell a few for triples and, again, remain liquid. And they can still got a major moon bag going on and, you know, they can pay bills and whatever it is they like to do. Now, it's not just micro strategy that's still buying. We go over here. Grayscale. Just last week, I think, what was this, the 8th of December. So that's four days ago. They bought... 131,000 Ethereum, 131 and basically a half thousand Ethereum. That's about $74 million worth of Ethereum. So they think Ethereum is well underpriced at the moment. And look, there was a couple of stories a while ago that there's people who are becoming, you know, we all heard the term Bitcoin maxis. Well, Ethereum maxis and Grayscale has been noting, noticing that there has been a lot of money piling into Ethereum. And some people are just doing Ethereum only. So yeah, Ethereum, I think it's still quite cheap. It's sort of $500. Again, I think we could still come down a little bit, but I don't think we're going to see any massive dips at the moment. Could be wrong. I've been wrong before. I will be wrong again. I'm not an oracle. I'm not a savant. I don't know it all. It's just my gauge. Again, if someone's buying 131000 uh, worth of Ethereum, and a lot of it's getting locked up in ETH 2.0 uh, and all the rest of it, it means there is going to be a supply shortage at some time, at some stage. Look, they've also bought $74 million worth of Bitcoin as well. This is four days ago, ladies and gents. It's only the 12th right now. So if they're still buying these big conglomerates, do you think the price is really going to dump a whole lot from here? It is unlikely. Not impossible. Again, you know, there can be manipulation from whales who own, you know, a whole lot more. But I just don't think it is. I think it's, you know, a bit of the miners are obviously selling because uh, it's at a good price at the moment. Not all of it, but selling. People who, again, invested early and maybe have a lot of Bitcoin and that. You know, they got in at $4,000, $5,000, $6,000. You know, they've tripled and quadrupled their money already. So they're just uh, taking some back. And also probably hoping that it goes a little bit lower and they can buy in again at a cheaper price. So MicroStrategy raised $650 million. They were only aiming for $400 million, but that many people uh, bought these bonds uh, that they've got now got $650 million and they're planning to buy Bitcoin with it. Grayscale, still in just the last few days, uh, buying a ton of Ethereum and still buying Bitcoin. Uh, what do we got over here? There is a bank, so over in Singapore, and there's something interesting I found about this. So they're launching a crypto uh, exchange uh, featuring Bitcoin. So they're going to be buying Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, and Bitcoin Cash. I'm surprised, surprised I didn't see Litecoin Cash in there. Uh, sorry, Litecoin Cash, Litecoin in there, as it's been you know regulated and all the rest of it. But anyway, this is just another reason Bitcoin's going to be bought. They're going to need to buy it for their members. Ethereum is going to need to be bought. XRP is going to need to be bought. Bitcoin Cash is going to need to be bought. This is a big major bank in Singapore that's probably got you know, tens of thousands, if maybe not even hundreds of thousands of customers. And eventually they are all going to buy this. I can tell you right now, they will. It's just, you can see it's what's coming. And this is just yesterday. So again, you know, we see the markets. Give this a bit of a refresh and we can see that there's been some red it looks like things are already starting to pick up slightly now, but the market's been sort of coming down a little bit. People are nervous, but there's all this stuff going on. Now here, Twitch director, Sean 
Puri moves 20, 25% of his net worth into Bitcoin to front run the wave of institu institutional capital. So again, institutions, the really, really early ones are here. The rest of them aren't. There's still such a lot of money just come towards this space. And again, these are, this is the smart money. This is people who can see what's coming and they're going to be considered early adopters. If you're here now, you're going to be considered an early adopter. For anyone who's new to the space, uh, you are still early in the grand scheme of things. Bitcoin's only been around for you know, 11, 12-ish years. It is a very early emerging market. If you don't know, uh, these fluctuations that we have, and again, we can go back to here, they're perfectly normal. Pumps up, sideways, drops off a little bit, pumps up, big massive drop, drop off right there. Again, that was due to the pandemic. You just need to scale out and have a look to understand how markets work. So again, this is the last bull market. Again, we basically bottomed out maybe, yep, around about here. So January 2015. And then look at that kind of move it made that lasted all the way till basically very early 2018. Not quite, so it was actually December 2017 for Bitcoin. But the altcoins, they pumped through till sort of January and then it all started to fall off. So, and again, not fall off, just a normal healthy retracement. So anyone who's new to this space and they're probably panicking, don't worry. You just got to hold for the long term, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. This is most likely going to go up. In my opinion, it will. And 100% it's going to go up. But it doesn't mean it can't come back down a little bit first. And look, maybe even come back and test this 13,000. God forbid, maybe test this 12,000. That is possible. I just don't think it's likely with all this news that we're sort of finding. Now we go over here. Seems Apple have finally got uh, cryptocurrency payments going uh, through the Apple system now. So it's through the Lumi wallet. So over here, you can now buy Bitcoin with Apple thanks to a new integration in the multi-currency -crypt, uh, multi crypto wallet app Lumi. You can also buy ETH, Bitcoin Cash, Tether, Binance US, Celsius, DAI, EOS, and more than 1,200 ERC20 tokens. Again, I'm surprised Litecoin's not there. It's been regulated and all the rest of it. But look, PayPal's got Litecoin, and I'm sure Litecoin will probably be added at some stage. Uh, I'm pretty bullish on Litecoin uh, for, for at least, well, I think long term now, the fact that it's been, you know, regulated uh, and, you know, banks are allowed to take custody of it means it's, there's going to be plenty of upside, but it doesn't mean it can't come down lower in the short term. All right, Tyler Winklevoss, smartest people in the room buying Bitcoin quietly. So he basically just goes on to say here, you know, you got the likes of Paul Tudor Jones. Now he's not buying Bitcoin, he's buying Bitcoin futures, but I'm sure he will move to Bitcoin in the future when he realizes that, you know, he can make all this money from these futures, but the money's becoming worth less and less. Now MicroStrategy is buying, Square Cash App's buying, um, oh God, who else is there? Uh, Sky Ridge is getting in. Uh, you know, there's so many places. Grayscale, they're all out there starting to buy, uh, and not even starting. They've been there for a while. You know, Mass Mutual. We talked about that just the other day. They've put in a hundred million dollars uh, into uh, Bitcoin. This is what they're talking about. It's that wave of institutional adoption. It is starting to pick up. The retail stuff hasn't even started yet. The retail stuff is very small and minor at the moment. And it's not until you're hearing about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies on your local news channels and in your local newspapers that you know the real crazy stuff has started. It's still all very quiet and it's just the big big guys, you know, big boys and girls are uh, getting in nice and early. And if you're here and listening to this, you're part of that. So congratulations to you. Uh, I've been here since 2017. Uh, I've seen, you know, I got in the late part of that bull run. So I was in the euphoria and I just thought this is going to last forever. Uh, I turned 400. I've told this story a couple of times before. 400, no, sorry, I think about $800 into around about $4,200. In a matter of weeks, I couldn't believe it. And then in a matter of months after that, because the uh, cycle ended, that you know, 800 turned into 4,200, turned into around about 350, 320, something like that. And now 
that money. I, I never sold it. I've still got it. I've swapped some coins. But now that 800 is back worth, I think, around about nearly $1,500 US. Uh, and so again, $800 uh, when I talk uh, was Australian. So I've, I've basically sort of nearly, yeah, doubled my money. I'm probably just over doubling my money. But I've, again, I've seen it fluctuate really high and really low. Now, um, yeah, this one wasn't that interesting, but you know, someone basically saying why they think 2021 is set for even uh, bigger Bitcoin adoption and really high prices. But there was something that I found interesting. So Bitcoin is up 170% this year. Where else can you go where you can put money in and make 170% in a year? There's not too many places. And this is after we're having a bit of a retracement now. Now it also was up 90% last year in 2019. So again, we go over here and there was this big, massive, you know, 20 top, you know, blow off top, 20,000 blow off top. And then it came all the way down uh, to December the next year to basically 3,000, I think it was 3,200, 3,000, something like that. Maybe even 2,800 in some places. And since then, it's just been making its way back up, but it has healthy corrections. So again, you go from something that's, you know, let's say just 3,000, we'll round it off, to $14,000 in a matter of months. Of course, it's going to sort of retrace back. And here was the low, started to make its way back up again. We all know what happened with the pandemic. So we had a really big crash. And then since there, look at it, it's making its way back up again. So yes, it could you know start to come back and again test somewhere down around about here, maybe even down here, possibly down to here. I just think that's unlikely. Uh, the the trend is most likely upwards. Now I did find another interesting story. So basically here it's talking about Chainlink, and it's interesting the way that some people will, you know, the 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 tone they use when they write about certain things. So here. Chainlink posts first death cross since 2018 against the Bitcoin pair. And so basically what's happened uh, is it's broke the trend. At some stage it was going to break the trend. And look, I uh, put some money on Chainlink when it hit the uh, when it hit the line, and I'll go to the chart very shortly, because I thought it was going to go up. But it hasn't. It hasn't uh, held that support. It's actually broken it. But it's not the end of the world. Again, people are talking about, you know, the death cross. Let's go and have a look. Here's the Chainlink chart. So for a really long time, every time Chainlink came and touched this red line, it would bounce off and bounce off really hard. So it came here, bounced off really hard, came here, bounced off really hard, came here, bounced off really hard, flirted with it, and then just made again this massive move. So this was our trend line. And if we broke below it, it means we were a little bit bearish. doesn't mean it's the end of the world, but this is what's happened here. So now it's broken through this support. So this, excuse me, is now null and void. We'll keep it here for now because it still may suddenly rock it back up. We'll just have to wait and see. Things change very fast in the industry. Now, there used to be a line that was around about kind of here that was, you know, the old sort of support level. Uh, it has sort of flipped that and is below. So now we are looking at maybe Bitcoin, uh, sorry, Chainlink coming back down and testing here. So it's at about sort of 66,000 Satoshis. This is 52,000 Satoshi. So there's around about, you know, 14,000 Satoshi's difference. And for those who don't know Satoshi's, uh, they're a hundred millionth, I think, uh, of a Bitcoin. But in dollar terms, from here to here is only about $2. So that's not really too much. So you can wait and see if Chainlink will come back down and test here and rock it back up. Or you can buy and hold. Again, that's my thing. I'm... I do a bit of swing trading, but you know it's a, you know it's kind of potluck. Sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong. This what time I've got it wrong at the moment, but that's not to say Chainlink doesn't all of a sudden find support and sometime next week, you know maybe get down to here and then just start to make one of these big massive moves here. No one really knows, but either way, I believe in Chainlink. I'm an investor. I invested many many months ago the bulk of it, but I am still bullish on Chainlink. And so I am looking to add to my position. So I'm waiting to see what happens here. Uh, if it starts to make a move up, 
then you know maybe I'll buy some more. If it starts to make moves down, I'm definitely buying more because I don't think Chainlink's going to come down that far. I would be surprised if it comes down and tests this kind of uh, old resistance level because that's what it was, resistance, resistance, sort of resistance, but then became support. Uh, and it hasn't come back and tested there for a while. So we'll wait and see. Now, ladies and gentlemen, nothing I offer is financial advice. It's just my personal opinion. I'm not a financial advisor. It could quite possibly break through this and come down even further. That is entirely possible. I just don't think that's what's going to happen. I think we are close to the bottoming period of this downtrend uh, in most things. And we will start to make our way back up and reach new all-time highs. You know, it still could possibly be late this year, but I think it's maybe going to be early next year. You know, Christmas is coming. People will probably start to take some more profits and things like that, you know, uh, to buy Christmas presents and, you know, go on holidays and all the rest of it. And that's what people do. And if they've been in Bitcoin since, you know, January this year, they are well in profit. They are well in profit. So they may take some profits. That's all we need to remember. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on the gain train at the moment, but there were some gains out there, so congratulations if you're on it, and I'll see you next time.